Hey DF fans, today in this video I'm going to walk you through using the public preview of the Delta Connector for Azure Data Factory. So during preview the Delta Connector is only working with data flows. That's really a nice advantage for you because data flows are also built on Spark technology as well as uh, Delta and Delta Lake. So what we do with a data flows is we execute your logic on a Spark cluster behind the scenes, completely abstracted from you. You don't need to worry about it, you don't need to understand it at all. You just build your transformation logic and then we execute the Spark cluster. So what that means is you can build a data lake with Delta and you can manage those Delta files using data flows without needing to have your Spark cluster stood up and managed during that ETL period. During the ETL, Data Factory will spin that for you using data flows. And so that also gives you the advantage of being able to use the other uh, transformation capabilities of data flows against your Delta, as well as including the functionality within data flows for update inserts, upserts, and deletes. That all is fully supported in Data Factory with Delta Lake. So it's a great way to build a data lake uh, within Azure using the Delta formats and using Data Factory. So let me walk you through a demo of how to do this. So for the first demo, I'm going to use this uh, data flow I have here called Delta Flow 1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by constituting a brand new Delta Lake. So I'm going to do that in my Azure Data Lake store, and I'm going to do that from a CSV source. So I'm essentially going to convert my CSV to Delta. So you'll see over here in my ADLS Gen 2, I do not have any folders or any files yet for Delta. So what I will do is start with the source, which is my movies data. It's my typical delimited, a text limited CSV file for data that I use with movie uh, listings and movie ratings. And if I go over into the projection on this, you'll see that I have already asked Data Factory to detect data types. So through data type inference, Data Factory is able to take what is a plain text CSV file and infer the data types by sampling the data from that file. And these are the data types that it gave me. And so this is great because when I store my data in Delta Lake, it'll get stored on my ADLS Gen 2 data lake with the data types and the columns and the data all there. So it's a very rich set of data because it's using Parquet files. So the whole Parquet file management and the, along with the log file management that comes with Delta is managed for you through the ETL process of Data Factory. Now I'm not gonna do any transformation in between in this sample. I just wanna load data into the Delta data lake. And what I'm gonna do here is just transform just the data types and then just the CSV into Delta. So in the sync, the way that I tell Data Factory that I wanna sync this data as Delta is over here on the sync transformation, there is this option data flow that's called sync type. Sync type was a fairly recently new add to the capability in, in Data Factory. And what this allows me to do is to pick a type of format that I want to land the data in that is stored just in the transformation. So your options when you pick sync type are data sets, which is the shared set of data sets for your factory within data factory. So there's a whole set of shared data sets that you can use throughout your factory. Or you can just say, you know what, I want to inline define my Delta uh, data set. And when you do that, what we ask you for is the location of the link service. So this link service points to my ADLS Gen 2 here. And then what I'll do is, oops, what I'll do is on that sync, I'll also say that I want to constitute my Delta Lake here in this folder. So under my container, I'm going to ask Data Factory to build a new folder, create a new folder called Delta 1, and that is where it's going to put all of my uh, Delta files. For this demo, I'm not going to use compression. Vacuum will allow you to set a time period for which you can retain versions in your uh, Delta Lake. So there's a whole version capability, they call it time travel, and I'll demo that for you here as well. So you can go back and look at old versions of your data. Very, very a nice feature within Delta. And then we'll do the truncate table to um, uh, drop all the rows. We'll do that a little bit later on as well. And I'm only going to insert. So I'm just gonna insert rows. And like I said, we also show you how you can use the alter row capability, typically reserved for databases, but the Delta Lake will turn your data lake into somewhat of a database by using the uh, update insert delete methods. All right, so I'm just gonna insert and we can use data preview just to get a quick 
unit smoke test to make sure that all the data is there and look at the way I want it to. There's all my movies data that I expect to see. Now, all the other features of Dataflow come along with it for the ride, so you get your optimizations to be able to set the partitioning manually. I'm going to leave the partitioning for this first uh, run, this first execution, as a default. Use current partitioning, just tells Data Factory to let Spark do its thing for partitioning. Now, when I did the data preview within Dataflow, if you haven't seen it before, the data preview is just a snapshot of what the data looks like in memory and the data frames within Spark. If you want to actually land that data and put it into your data store, you need to run it from a pipeline. So conveniently, I have a pipeline right here, and I just got to point to my Dataflow 1 to create my data lake. So we're going to hit debug. When you hit debug, this is going to run without a trigger. It'll just run instantaneously, and it'll use the cluster that was spun up in the background, the Spark cluster, for your debug session will be the cluster, cluster that will be used for this execution. So let's go ahead and let's refresh this. And what we'll start to see is Data Factory will add that uh, folder for Delta into my data lake store. And there we see the Delta 1 folder, and there is the parquet file, and there is the log file. Now, um, um, when I executed this, when I built this data flow, I did not set any of the partitions. Let's go ahead and take a look at, see what Spark did behind the scenes. So because I only have 9,000 rows, Spark just uh, lumped everything into a single partition. When you work with larger data, that's fine too because uh, Spark should be able to uh, be smart enough on the Dataflow side to um, partition that data for you. But I just want to show you that you can also take control over partitioning in Data Factory. So I'm going to go into my source and I'm going to set the partitioning here. Um, I know that I have a uh, primary key in my data, so I'm going to hash on this high cardinality column. And I'm going to set the number of partitions manually to 10. I'm just picking this number just for demonstration purposes so you can see. If you do manually take over the partitioning, you, know, you do need to know a little bit about your data and how many partitions are the best set of partitions to use to make your uh, data flow uh, work optimally. So you, you do need to have some understanding of your data and the size of the integration runtime you're going to use. Now when I sync the data, I will leave the optimization to the, to the same. I'm just going to say use that current partitioning. And when data flow gets to the stage, it will maintain that same partitioning of that source data. So let's go ahead and actually one more thing I want to do, let me quick do this too, is just because I want to reset, I'm going to truncate the table. All right, so I'm going to truncate. I'll show you that you can do this too. And we'll insert again. All right, so we're going to just kind of reset here. So let's go ahead and let's execute this. And so now while this is executing, you see the data factory is able to use Spark to partition based on my request to partition. I get multiple files now to store my uh, Delta, uh, my Delta Lake. And then back here on Data Factory, we will be able to see that this is just about finished doing probably some cleanup at this point. And if we look at the monitoring, we'll see that we pretty evenly distributed across those 10 partitions. So I'm pretty happy with the hashing function that I use for my. All right, great. So we've got our, our Delta Lake. Now what we can do is move on to something a little bit uh, fancier. Let's go to a, another data flow that I call Data Flow Delta Flow 2. I'm going to, by the way, I'm going to keep mixing up data and Delta throughout this video. So I apologize in advance in terms of using this terminology. So for the source, I'm going to take the data already in my lake, my Delta Lake, and I'm going to transform it in place. So I'm going to set the source type to inline this time on my source, because I'm not going to use a shared data set. I'm not going to use any CSV data. I'm going to take the data directly in that uh, Delta Lake. And remember, I have it stored here in this uh, via this link service. And then the location, I just have to tell Data Factory that it is in Delta 1 folder. And here is where you can use the time travel. So I can go back and I can look at previous versions of the data, but I only have my data loaded this one time and I'm not gonna demo this yet at this point in this uh, video. So we'll just keep it to disabled and we'll get the latest set of data now that is in the lake. The projection, so I can import the schema and what Data Factory will do is it'll go out into my um, Delta Lake and it'll pull in the uh, schema from those parquet files and we'll let you know what the shape of the lake. So there we go. And for some simple transformations, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take that Rotten Tomato um, rating that is in the data already, and I'm going to make every movie automatically be 100 Rotten Tomato. So every video, every movie is perfect. And I'm casting two shorts explicitly because the auto discover of the data types within Data Factory uh, uh, chose shorts as the data type. So I want to make sure my data types match here. So I'm casting to short. That's that's it for my transformation just for demonstration purposes and then I set an alter row. Now alter row was typically reserved in data factory for data flows in the past just for databases but Delta Lake acts a lot like a database that I can do updates, inserts, deletes. 
and upserts. All I have to do is set a policy for each one. So in this case, because I just want to set 100 as the rating for everything, I'm going to have a filter of true. So this means that Data Factory will mark every row to be an update. And then when you get to the sync, the sync setting is the same as we had before, delta as your inline type, point to your delta files. But now because I am updating, I set the checkbox on the update method to update. I don't want to insert anything, I want to update in place. When you do that, you need to set your key columns. So my data has some data quality issues in it, and that's, um, that is by choice. I did that on purpose so I can demonstrate data quality within Data Factory data flows. But what that also means that I need these three columns to be my composite key, okay? Because I have movie replicated in there, the ID a couple of times. So I'm going to say movie plus title plus year is my uh, key so that um, data flow can find the unique uh, uh, rows in my, based on this, this composite key in my Delta. So the mapping is going to be auto mapping because I'm just updating in place the oh, Rotten Tomato. I'm not going to set any optimizations on these. I believe I just have these set to default. Yep, that's fine. We don't. We already showed that, so we don't need to do that again. Let's do a quick data preview just to do a quick unit test validation. And yep, there's all the data. The rating is uh, sorry. The Rotten Tomato rating is 100, and you can see that uh, uh, Data Factory has marked each one of those as an update. So once the sync sees that, it'll be able to issue the update command into Delta. Good enough. Let's go ahead and run this guy. So we're going to go over to the pipeline and we'll change the Delta flow to Delta flow two, which is the update that I just had. And we'll go ahead and click debug and we'll let it do its thing. Now what we will see over here in my data lake store is we will see the files timestamps change. So you will see the activity in here. You don't need to ever really go in here. Um, we, we expect you to be abstracted from this. Just build your logic work through data, have your data updated uh, directly from Data Factory. But I just want to show you how things kind of work behind the scenes with the management of the parquet files in these partition folders within um, the storage account and how Delta works with these files. And so there you see things getting updated on the file system. So what's going to happen now is this should be just about done. Let me go into the detail view and you see that it is completed. And uh, let's see what Spark actually do. So Spark actually stuck with those 10 partitions. So we're fine. The performance is good enough for this. Now to prove that the um, data was landed with the updated Rotten Tomato, what I did was I made a simple data flow called Delta Flow 3 that just has one source. And I just use this just for data exploration. This is just for looking at the data and validating it. Okay. So I have my uh, projection, which I don't really need, but I have it anyway. And I can just click data preview here just to make sure that the data is what we want it to be. Let's make sure everything else is set. I got the source options to say no time travel. So I'm looking at just that latest snapshot of the data, which is going to have the Rotten Tomato of 100. And then we can see that the data is been updated in the Delta Lake. Now, last thing I want to demo for you real quick before we're out of time here is I want to show you how you can delete. So I'm going to go over to this uh, data flow called Delta Flow 4. Again, I'm going to use my source as Delta and all I'm going to do is no transformation of the data. I'm just going to set a profile for the delete if. So this policy is year less than 2000. So I'm going to clobber and just get rid of any movie before the year 2000. I just think they're not applicable. No real reason. It's just what I decided to do. So what that's going to do is on the sync, the sync is exactly the same as the last data flow, except I changed update to delete. Okay, just change the check the checkbox. The part the um, composite key is the same. We can go ahead and data preview just to make sure that um, we are tagging the right movies and anything before 2000 is marked for deletes. And that looks good. All these older movies are fine. The ones that are 2000 or later are uh, not marked for delete. So I think we're good. Let's go ahead and delete those against our delta lake. All you got to do now is point to that data flow, click debug, and data factory will remove those rows from my delta lake. And as soon as this is done, I'll go over to that Delta Flow 3, which is just the validation uh, exploration data flow, where I can make sure that all of these rows will have been deleted from my Delta Lake. And refresh, and there you see the only movies we have left are 2000 or later. Well, one last quick thing before I forget. Um, if you want to go back and see the version of the data before that last lead operation, just change the version to an older version. I'm going to use version 0. Go to data preview, refresh, and whoop, the data's back. So very cool. So that's how you use Delta within Data Factory. Uh, thanks for watching.